Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Dave. Hello. And we are working on the new Lord Croak model. It's actually pretty solid. Um, it's clearly not the one on the right. Uh, that's the old one we thought we'd bring in for size. So Dave has brought this in, he's assembled it all together. He's told me about his terrifying rules and uh, yeah, it's kind of scary. So, but uh, first off, we get to see the old one for size comparison. Um, and uh, Dave has kept this one in pristine shape with no paint on it, just for us, um, so that we can compare them apples to apples. So that's really considerate. It was very considerate. <laughs> it was super considerate. Yes. <laughs> That so, was the plan the whole time. The whole time. Just keep him pristine for 20 something years and uh, good to go. Good to go. He's even gotten in, look, and he's taken some spawn spikes and he's put them in at the bottom. So we said you were just going to run them as a normal slam. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Sweet. But, you know, that's old news. We'll just put him off to the side for a second and we get this guy. Oh, he's a monster. So I haven't actually, even as we've been, as, we, as we've been talking, can't talk today, speaking of, um, I haven't really taken a look at the model. I just kind of wanted to kind of see it with fresh eyes while we're talking. Um, Dave's been telling me about like loads of the rules. He's an absolute beast. You said get up to like 18. He's got 18 wounds. Um, there's a lot of a lot of debate as to whether or not his dead for innumerable ages rule is good, but I think I think it's easy enough to work with. As uh, you have to roll 3d6 and add the wounds he's taken that phase. To achieve a 20 plus to kill him. Anything below that, he just doesn't take any damage. Right, and he's lost his uh, invulnerable save too, right? His, he lost his, his or feel, feel no, no pain. pain yeah, 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 exactly. The ward save of old. Yeah. But he's actually, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of a neat mechanic, so you can never really trust him. It actually reminds me of the, um, the Nazgul King from Lord of the Rings. Well, apparently he had something like this rule back when AOS first came out, too. Oh, cool. And they changed it as time went on, and now it's kind of gone back. Nice. But um, I think what we're looking at here today mostly, like, I mean, and the rules, and like, uh, honestly, his his rule set is an entire page. It's it's terrifying, actually, uh, going against him. He can dispel kind of from all over the place. He can he can cast through skinks, and he can cast a ton of spells. It's... It's absolutely terrifying. So it's, uh, but the model I think is is amazing, and I really like kind of the floating kind of rubble and structure that's going around him. It's kind of the first thing I see. Um, how is he actually? You know, how is he to put together? Uh, you know, I was a little intimidated when I saw a picture of the model. I went, okay, how's this thing gonna go together? But it went together surprisingly smoothly. Like it is so well engineered. It just fit together like just perfectly. Um, there are some little fiddly bits, but man, they just fit together well. And you it, can see like some of these connection points are ingenious. Like there's a little yeah. one, well, we can see that on both cameras. There's some it, vines that hold things. Then it's oh yeah, look at that. Little clips like on the rock rings. There's little bits of it that would be attached to the previous part. Yeah, but I mean it really pulls off that effect of being like floating through the yeah. air. and. It's much nicer than the old, say, flight stands that you get on, like, even the old Croak. Yeah. The old Slam. Like, he's still got stuff holding him up, but it looks more organic that he's floating along with these weird ring things floating around him. And he's got this, like, nice center of gravity, too. You can see that we've got, like, these big plastic join bits with the ground. Yeah. You know, there's a little bit of that terrain kind of mixed in as well, so that when you sand or you do whatever, you know, texturing you're doing at the bottom, yeah. it really kind of comes together. But, um... And it's, it's, it's kind of funny, like a lot of models you'll look at and there's so much detail that your eyes get lost. But each of these segments is all a little bit different. And I mean, once he's kind of built and washed and dry brushed and all that other stuff, you'll really see it all kind of pop out. Yeah. Oh, I think so. Yeah, it's really nice. Really cool. And I love how we got like kind of the swirlies kind of going through, you know, you've got the old school uh, kind of Amazonian. What would be the Amazonian kind of heads? Yeah, and the old Aztec, the Aztec Mayan Mayan yeah. theme going still, which I was glad they kept. Loads of feathers. That's been something that the Lizardmen have had since their inception. Yeah, I like that it's just like, it almost looked looks like technology without really looking like, like technology anyway. Well, and that's exactly how it should look, because they were, you know, designed to be that way. They've got their kind of arcane magical technology that they use. He flies around on his little magic flying chair there. 
Yeah, so it, it looks very much like I think it's supposed to. Yeah, yeah, really nice. It's kind of got that, that savage, wild look with the jungle and the little snakes and everything on it, but... Yeah, oh yeah, I, I'm just noticing this now. So, oh, I, obviously, I saw I thought these were vines, but they're little snakes yeah, just kind of all gathered of, around. He's sitting on a little bit of snakes, yeah. Well, you know, I gotta, <laughs> you get enough of them. It'd be like a little, uh, a little memory coil mattress. I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, the other thing that I noticed about it as well is there's not a lot of fragile parts. Uh, this spear has already been broken today uh, on the little guy here, uh, but uh, in fact though there's you know there's not a lot kind of hanging out. Like the feathers are nicely reinforced. These little dangly bits tend to be vulnerable, but they're kind of protected by the top there, which isn't there was bad. One or two of the leaves that were a little flimsy that. We're trying to snap away as I was cutting it out of the sprue, but right. even they seem to all hold together well enough. Yeah, and all these like little vines and drippy bits down behind. What's nice is that they're kind of protected by the general structure of the model as you grab it and try and hold it well, through. Well, and interestingly enough, this, it's so well balanced that this one thing with a little half base here yeah. was enough to balance the majority of this before the oh, rest of kidding? the basing went in. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, isn't because that neat? This vine has got up to about here because this was a separate bit and this is all separate. So you build this half of the model separately. And while this model half was basically built, it would balance on the one... On the one vine piece? Yeah. That's awesome. So little, just little things I'm noticing as well. I like how it kind of betrays the technology having like basically these little plug-in power cells up here. Yeah, you he's know, got like the little engine down here. Yeah, he's got like the little engine, so it's kind of that magic slash. Look at the back, they've kind of got it as a glowing thing here. Oh yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's <laughs> the way the camera set. We're actually doing this on the table. You can hear the birds chirping and traffic driving by. But uh, as we try and monkey this in here, but uh, yeah, so they've got kind of these little glowing energy orbs and it's got this little bit of a, kind of like the jade kind of look to it here. Yeah. Yeah, that's really sweet. No, I'm super stoked about getting him painted up. Or are you getting him painted up, I guess? Someone will have to paint him. Seeing him painted up. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah. Um, Dave's gone ahead and he's left this, speaking of assembly, he's left this as a sub-assembly so that he can paint Croak and his chair and everything separately. And, but there's just a little notch in here, his butt notch. Um, and of course, you'll just, you'll just be able to super glue him right in. Oh, yeah. I'll just glue him right in there. Um, the skink I decided to glue on is there were parts of the chair that were part of the skink. One of the skink's legs was attached to one of the chair parts, right. etc. His hand had another bit of block to fill in a, a gap. So I glued the skink on, but I don't think he'll be difficult to paint around. No, no, you got lots of room. And like even with the structure here, just to get the brushes in and stuff, you got yeah. loads of room. And uh, yeah, it's really good. Croak himself is looking pretty sweet too. Like I like, I like the way he's got, um, you know, he's just kind of just casually holding on to his little totems there. Yeah. I like his little decoration across the back. And he had a couple of options for the head, but I wanted oh, cool. a super ornate mask there. Yeah, why wouldn't you, right? There was another option where he could have this ring out of his chin and then a, a single feather. And another option where he could just have the bare face with a single feather. But I like the big fancy mask. Yeah, you got, you got to go large, you go home for sure. Mask. Really cool. He's got these weird kind of arm bracers here coming up. Well, he's wrapped in uh, wraps, right? He's a mummy. Oh, there you go. Yes, I can see that now. Yeah. Absolutely. I thought that was just texture, but yeah. It's not just texture. It's texture for his wrappings. All wrapped up in his business. Yeah, he gets real wrapped up in his work. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, so yeah, it's a it's a sweet looking model. It's a really good size too. Like this is a this is a sixty mil base, and I mean looking again at the old model, that's I think it's actually an eighty base. It's eighty base. It's tough to get that sense of scale for sure. It is. Yeah, you know maybe it is actually. Yeah, I can see that. It's not an old War Machine kind of cast resin base that he had here to hold the old metal one up, but yeah, well, but he takes up loads of one for him, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, he takes up loads of real estate. And he's just, he's got that really neat rule for kind of keeping him alive. So you got to protect him. He's not going to be one of those heroes you just toss out unsupported. No, no, you're not going to want to do that because he will, I mean, he's got a four plus save, but anything that wants to kill him in this game will take him down. So you're going to want to give him his source guard and his astrolith bearer for a bit of extra protection. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, look at these extra little details. Like even in here, the little mouths of the snakes. Yeah, and those were actually three parts. We lost a leg so. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but that's really cool. Yeah, and you got these little these little bits and pieces. I mean, I'll grab it on the phone here. Uh, you got these little bits and pieces. All this little kind of filigree and kind of design that's in here. Uh, really cool. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. That's just kind of our quick and dirty uh, kind of first take on Croak here. Um, obviously, you'll probably see him in some of the games we'll be streaming now that things are opening up and the, the global thing is kind of slowing down a little bit here and we're getting back to a little bit of normal. So uh, yeah, thanks for Dave for, for coming by and bringing this stuff in. Thanks for having me. Uh, if you guys like the video, obviously uh, hit the like button and if you want more videos like this and just kind of, um, you know, you're interested in seeing kind of model previews and painting schemes and games and stuff, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks a lot for coming Dave and we'll uh, catch you guys in the next video.